Hey everyone and welcome to Shadow the Vein. I'm Brad Chmielewski and Van Glory, we're getting close to patch 1.10. Uh, we got a little tease this week. We're going to go over some of those changes uh, and what can be expected here. Uh, a little bit in the news. Uh, hopefully we'll do a patch rundown. Um, it doesn't seem like it's going to be a huge patch and I got to go to BlizzCon this coming weekend. So we'll see if I have time. Depends on when this patch drops. If it if it drops Wednesday or any later than that, I cannot promise a patch rundown this week. I'm so sorry. Hopefully Super Evil uh, gets that out maybe Monday or Tuesday. Uh, so that would be good. Uh, games this week have been uh, pretty fun. Maintaining that Hotness Silver ranking right now. Um, bouncing between uh, slowly moving up, you know. Uh, it's tough to climb. I end up doing a lot of solo queue, even though, you know, I have the Wicked Guild. Uh, just a lot of those people are always in games. I'm playing at weird times, streaming. Uh, so yeah, just doing a lot of solo queue and playing a lot of a lot of Catherine, a lot of Arden, and a lot of Scarf. Those are kind of my three go-to people right now and having a lot of fun. Uh, we got some news about the Femme Fatale tournament coming up. We got the VIPL thing. Uh, uh, announcement dates, those tournaments coming up. That package is always fantastic. It looks great. Uh, Going to be rooting for Arden and Gangstars and definitely want to see the Hunters uh, make it a lot farther and do great again. Uh, Queen, fantastic player, and it's really great to see a, a female on the stage like that. That's always fantastic. Hopefully we'll see more of those in the future. Uh, and I want to mention, still got the Patreon page going uh, that's over at patreon.com slash shadow the vein. Uh, I love everyone that listens to the show, supports the show, emails. Uh, if you have emails or thoughts about the show, email that at shadow the vein at gmail.com. And, you know, I love everyone that listened. But if you can support the show too, I do all this for free for the love of Aunt Glory. Uh, so over at the Patreon page, you can donate. I'll send out some stickers. We got some rewards for t shirts if we get there. And then if we uh, start, you know, getting a bunch of people back in the show, we'll do more shows, maybe two shows every week, maybe like a Vangloria game, Vanglory game show, uh, things like that. We'll have a, a lot of fun with it. Uh, but go over there, patreon.com slash shadow the vein. Uh, and this week on episode 57, whew, 57 already, we're getting close to 60 now, man, they just keep rolling and rolling and November will be our one year anniversary here towards the end of the month so we'll do something special for that but on this week's episode i have mademoiselle joining me uh, to talk about the femme fatale tournament uh some of the eu meta and gameplay what she sees and yeah it's just a all-around super fun episode so yeah get ready here we go shatter the vein a podcast about vain glory This is the 57th episode of Shatter the Vein. My name is Brad Chmielewski, and this is a podcast about vainglory. Every week, try to break down the news, gameplay, game tips, and hopefully we can all become better players together. And every week, I'm bringing on new people from the community, people that love vainglory, YouTubers, streamers, anyone who wants to jump on, more than welcome to come on and chat with me. And this week, I have Mademoiselle joining me. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you for the nice welcome. Um, hello, I'm Mademoiselle. I'm from the European server. Um, I play for almost one year already. Okay. And uh, I do enjoy the game and the community a lot. And uh, I really want to do a lot for it, uh, like this tournament we are organizing. Uh huh. Yeah. That's cool. Uh, did you? Did you play other MOBAs or other games before getting into Vanglory at all? Um, no, actually, Vanglory is my first MOBA played ever. Okay. And it's it's really exciting because um, it was quite tough at the beginning because I didn't have like the mechanics of other players and um, okay. I stayed a lot in pretty good level. But <laughs> I may, met amazing people who helped me a lot to rank up and also to understand the game and have fun in the same time so okay it's quite cool so were you playing were you other were you playing other games or were you 
gamer growing up? Like, uh, do you always play games or just like just happen to fall in love with this game? Well, um, I actually fell in love with this game and not only with the game, more with the people I'm playing with. Okay. Because uh, if I, I, I never go like solo queue or something, I always go in parties with Discord and we chat and have fun and go quite random sometimes. Like, okay, okay, go three supports in ranked and we don't have. <laughs> which, is, which is really, really cool and fun. Yeah, I think that's one of the things I've grown to love about this game too is the community and just like the people you meet. Like, for some reason, everyone is incredibly nice that plays this game. There are like, you know, some outliers but yeah. for the most part like it's like wow why why is everyone so nice in this game i don't know <laughs> yeah most most of the people are really nice and you can actually make a lot of friends like i'm going to visit a friend who i met in game this uh like one year ago and we are going to meet this summer so oh that's cool yeah, so that's uh, cool. local person or no no so you're like traveling he's from uh amsterdam and i'm from US, oh. so i'm going to travel to him and he oh that's come awesome. to me after that which is cool very neat yeah um how's the so when you're playing are you usually playing on the eu servers or do you jump on na do you kind of bounce around well um lately i uh made made contact with the north american community um, yeah. I played a lot, I'm playing usually on U server, but um, I met Sphix and also other girls and uh, in the past few weeks I played more than usual with them with Discord and stuff and we were having fun and laughing, which is really really great because you get to know a lot of people from around the globe, which is a quite amazing experience and helpful Yeah, for me. You learn a lot of stuff, you learn also about culture. You learn to understand people, which is amazing for me. For sure, yeah. Uh, when you're playing, what's your what's your like go to role to play? You play like everything, or you well uh, lane. I main support like okay. most of the girls, but uh, lately I started to train for the tournament uh, weapon power carry lane like Bob okay. or Ringo. And uh, I started to actually carry. Like <laughs> at the beginning, I was always like uh, zero uh, kills and like eight, nine deaths. And now, okay. <laughs> and all my friends are like, oh my God, Sauce is carrying. This is impossible. How? And I'm like, oh my God, how did I do it? It's, <laughs> it's really cool how this tournament actually changed my role of playing now. Right? Okay. Yeah, and you're talking about the Femme Fatale tournament. We're going to talk about that a whole bunch in the news so for anyone that's like wondering what what tournament does she keep referencing it's the femme fatale tournament and we'll get into that here in a little bit um so as you're playing uh in na now how's have you noticed like a big difference between the way people play versus eu or does uh, it feel about the same are you are you uh, talking about the gameplay like, or the community yeah like like meta mm, well it has some differences uh for example i remember i was playing with neon fire from gangstars and he was always okay. telling me to go for i don't know the minions in the back and not taking one of them and i was like how why we need all the minions why yeah and we were fighting and arguing and uh, every we decided like every time i go on the north american server i do his way and when he comes in europe i do <laughs> okay. <laughs> no, it has a, a few differences. Um, as Hero Celeste is played a lot, but this is also in the European server. And okay. uh, Sky has been played more often than usual. And I don't know exactly the the usual heroes that we play as well. Vox okay, is so playable, and I see more and more weapon power voxes. But right. So not not a huge difference, at least for you. So not really, not really. Okay, yeah, because I don't I jump on there like so rarely, and my my EU account is probably like it's not even ranked, and it's <laughs> not even level ten. So I don't know. I don't. I don't worry, mine is either. Best okay. to ask about this is Solar, who always plays on EU. So uh, okay, all right. <laughs> Talk about that later then. Well, awesome. Well, let's uh jump into the news. Vain Glory News. 
So the first bit of news I want to mention is we got a little preview of what's coming in 1.10 on the Friday stream. Mm -hmm. uh, this stream this week was hosted by Gibbs. Uh, you'll typically see Gibbs or someone else host the stream on Fridays when Super Evil Megacorp is out of the office. Mm -hmm. And so it's a kind of dead giveaway that like the patch is submitted. We're done. We're taking the day off. Like we were putting in so many hours. So they like step away. Mm -hmm. And I saw on Twitter, I think they were doing like some uh, one of those rooms that you have to like escape from escape rooms. Uh, have you seen these? Have you heard of these escape rooms? Mm, no Not it's like a it's usually like team building events and you like go there and there's like a maybe like a zombie in the corner who's trying to like <laughs> attack you and you have like puzzles you have to get out so i've never done it but i hear they're pretty fun it, so. it's <laughs> yeah too yeah uh so they were doing that and gibbs was hosting the stream and he was uh playing with people on the pbe the the beta uh the test realm and people were, and he was showing off some of the changes. And these are not necessarily the final changes we were seeing on Friday, but there's a good chance that these are pretty close to what they would be. Mm -hmm. uh, and everyone is extremely upset at these changes. They're calling the the nerf patch, and everyone's like, "Why?" Yeah, yeah. <laughs> everyone's just getting hit hard. Uh, did you see any of this stream or look at any of the notes? I I. I was playing and watching the stream in the same time, so I don't know okay. exactly. But um, I have seen that uh, a lot of heroes have been nerfed, and uh, yeah, it's gonna be uh, an interesting, let's call it, update. Um, okay. Depends. We we all we always find something to how to adapt to the new updates, and I've never been, for example, a person to like changes, like. Okay. <laughs> But um, I think it's going to be all right. Of course, the Stormguard banner will be a problem. But um, I don't know how, uh, especially if the nerf of the heroes, how it's going to be exactly. Yeah. So first, I have to actually play them, not only read them, because playing and reading is a bit different. And For sure. Of course, yeah. new metas will come out. Definitely crew will be played more. For sure. And uh, yeah, Petal, Petal dead, and Taka as well. Do you think Petal's still not going to be played as much? Well, Petal, they told that Petal is going to be played in 1.9 a lot, which... And we didn't see her at all, yeah. <laughs> so I don't really have huge ex expectations from this, but with the hero nerf, Maybe we will see more petal players. It, it okay. might be happen, but I don't think it's going to be a petal, a petal meta or something. Okay, it, yeah. On my opinions. Okay, yeah. Some of the changes to petal are she's not going to have an energy system anymore. She's going to have like charges of her seeds. <laughs> um, so I think it's going to feel like a whole new hero again. Like you just got used to playing, or if you even tried out the new petal, like you just got used to that petal. And now they're changing pedal again with this like energy system or this not energy system, the seed charges. So you have to get used to that. Uh, but one thing is her munions, they're no longer going to steal last hits in the jungle if you have Iron Guard contract. Mm. Uh, so that's really helpful. Yeah, that's, uh, I know. True. that's true. Uh, I, I'm not a petal player, so I can't really say an exact opinion about her. Okay. Um, but I think, yeah. Definitely the update will uh, change a lot and it's going to take a while until the players uh, adapt to it, but it's going to be all right. And I'm, I'm sure uh, Super Evil Megacorp will try to do the best and are actually trying to do the best for us and to balance yes. the heroes and the gameplay for everyone. Uh -huh. Uh, yeah, but for some reason, like, I think there are a lot of number changes to people, but this patch seems kind of small. I guess we're so used to, like, huge balance changes and a new hero, and then we've only seen one skin so far. We've seen that Celeste skin, and we haven't even seen any teases of other skins, so it feels like we're due for maybe a couple other skins in this update that we haven't been shown yet. 
mm-hmm. uh, maybe some of those tier three ones were missing, maybe like a glaive tier three or a cruel tier three. Because there's yeah. no way Super Evil is going to release a patch with one skin that, oh, you can just buy that, no problem. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure, I mean, um, Super Evil Mega Corp is definitely busy. And uh, we had those lag problems in EU at least, huge, huge lags. Oh, okay. Uh, and uh, they they were really working on it day and night, so... I think they actually focused a lot on trying to um, make the the update the the update we have like 1.9 to do it perfect and as good as possible. And they focused less on the new update. Maybe I, okay. I don't really know exactly because I only have a few contacts and friends from moderators from uh, the community or people who work with Super Evil Megacorp, but I don't really know a lot of details. But I'm sure, uh, although it's going to be only one skin, I'm sure they're going to bring more the next update. Probably it's going to be like three A huge one, yeah. <laughs> like 10 skins. Uh, I'll be patient. I mean, I'm, I'm not hurrying. And I think it's better to, to have something small but good quality than something big with a lot of stuff. But only the bugs and issues with it yeah <laughs> you know. exactly exactly uh but yeah i'll probably do another update another episode here once this patch finally drops and we'll go over all these changes and uh see how they're gonna affect things a little bit uh i think i'm i feel like this update came fast so i think i'm okay with a small update like i was just finally like getting in the groove of 1.9 and like all right uh, so this this would be good, and I know it gets hard to play during the holidays for everyone, so that should be nice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's gonna be cool. Don't worry. And there are going to be the the Christmas seasonal skins, so I'm looking yeah, so we're, forward. So one month. Yeah, we're one month from that, so maybe they're saving it for that. Like a, like That's, you said, it'll be a, it'll be a giant update with a whole bunch of Christmas stuff. That, that would be cool, actually. A new map. So maybe they're working on them already, and that's why they didn't really focus. I don't know. Yeah, uh, but there are guild. There are the guild changes. Kind of talked about that on episode fifty six, where you're gonna be able to earn rewards for your guild if you're playing together. You now have the ability to earn um, ice if you like reach like one of the max levels. So that'll be kind of nice. More incentive to play with your friends. Yeah, that's and, that's really cool. Actually, the guild changes. I think they're amazing. Uh, I have been like in guilds. I've been like in two guilds until now. One for like over, like almost a year. Okay. Span, and now I'm in another one. And uh, I do enjoy playing with guildmates and seeing the tag like before our names is awesome. And I really <laughs> earning uh, fame. And um, yeah, I think that the rewards will actually motivate players like from the same team to play together and earn it. Mm-hmm. And it's going to be something really cool, like an ambitious, like, okay, we have to reach that certain level to get ice and glory, and which is cool. Yeah. It gives you the opportunity to play more with the guildmates and actually form teams and like form a small community, guild community. Yeah. Yeah, uh, you mentioned playing with everyone on Discord, and like uh, that always adds that community and fun. Uh, I'd love the ability to see how long someone is in a game because I know I get on a lot, and uh, the guild is either like they're playing or the people I play with they're already in a game, and I have no way to know is this game like are they one minute in or are they twenty minutes in? Like, should I wait for them? So it'd be yeah, nice to have cool. a way to be like in game for fifteen minutes. Just so you know, like, oh, okay, I'll wait. I can wait, see if they're out. Yeah, that's that's actually a really cool idea. If they do something like this, you see the time since when they started playing. And yeah, because sometimes I'm like writing online chat, somebody wants to play a game and no one is answering, then I'm checking right. and everyone is in game, but I don't know when they're coming out. Yeah, so, then they get then they get mad at you for not waiting. It's like, I, oh, I needed to play. Thank you. <laughs> And after two minutes, I get the message, okay, we finished, where are you? And I'm like, oh my god, I didn't know you were (laughs) finishing. So yeah, that would be actually really cool if they did something like this to see. Yeah, so maybe uh, 
There you go, uh, Kraken. You know, that's the idea for you. You can have that one for free. Go ahead, <laughs> run with it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that would be funny and cool. No. So get ready for patch 1.10. Uh, I think it's going to come probably Tuesday. We don't usually see patches on Monday. Everyone's getting back in the office. Yeah, so it seems like they come like Tuesday or Wednesday is usually yeah, the days. Think this Tuesday and this Wednesday? Yeah, I think so. I think it's it's already submitted to Apple. It's in Apple's hands, so they're waiting. Uh, I've heard that, but I hope that it won't be this week. To be oh, really? Okay, <laughs> why not? Because the tournament will be um, next week, this week, actually. And yeah. if there's going to be the update, I don't think like one week will be enough for us to up to, I don't know, to understand the update and the changes. And okay. we will like in one week, it's going to be quite difficult to actually play properly in the tournament. Okay. I could understand that. Yeah. But yeah, I'm, I don't know if they'd wait a, another week because I know then they I have v, VGL starting and yeah. lots of other stuff. <laughs> yeah. Um, we'll do what uh, we'll do. The tournament is already uh, on this and we checked it on the 7 and it's going to be then. And if it's, if the update is going to come this week, then uh, it's okay for us, I guess. We just cool. need to see exactly what the changes are in game. Right, yeah. So keep a, keep an eye out for that. Get ready for that. Uh, mm -hmm. Make some time to practice. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely this week. Uh, so yeah, so the, the Mob Crushes Femme Fatale Tournament, mm -hmm. uh, that's, you said, on this November 7th. Mm -hmm. And... Let us let us know what this is. I just I talked about it briefly last week, but you're here to talk about this tournament as the expert, the co-organizer of it, right? Organizer, actually. Uh, oh, okay. Here you no, start. This is you. So um, we we have like um, girl communities online chat on Facebook chat, uh, and we always like wanted something like this. And uh, one day uh, I took the initiative to mm -hmm. start it and I uh, talked with Sfix and Tatya about it and I told them, okay, I would like to do a tournament, but I would like to, uh, I need some help. I couldn't do it by myself. And right, they, yeah. were, they were really nice and told me, okay, we're going to organize this. And they were a huge, they are a huge help for me. And uh, hopefully I'm a huge help for them as well. <laughs> and uh, so, yeah, we were the three first ones. Then we asked, asked some help from MYQ. Uh, he's okay. a player from Europe uh, who, who knows how to handle this type of uh, tournaments and stuff. And he helped us a lot as well with uh, giving us advices where we can do the brackets, the registrations, to whom to talk for a logo maybe and stuff okay. and then <clears throat> uh, we we added the streamers and uh, a few more organizers co-organizers who are helping a lot and we are actually a team of 10 now oh wow okay yes and yeah. everyone like uh focuses on something and we are trying to help each other uh and it's it's running quite nice until now Today, uh, we are going to actually announce uh, officially the scheduling and the bracket. <clears throat> and uh, yeah, we, we have uh, 23 teams out of 24. Uh, we have eight from uh, North America, seven from Europe and eight from Southeast Asia. All Jeez, girls wow, confirmed. Okay. <laughs> and um, yeah, I, I really enjoyed doing this not only like organizing it but meeting all these people it's amazing like uh -huh. i was talking with i was forming like groups of girls like hey who's from southeast asian server and would like to play and i would i had like eight players and i put it them together and i see them now like from outside i see them growing and becoming friends and this is awesome like oh, this is what we actually wanted to achieve like to strengthen the community we have and it's it's amazing. I think it's okay. a huge step, especially in uh, in the game field, because um, usually the games are um, we have more boys who plays it than girls. Right. Yeah. 
And uh, actually finding girls and talking with them and having a blast, it's, it's really cool. Like, it, it, some people are not okay with this tournament. Uh, <laughs> I do understand the point, like, okay, it's, uh, it's uh, feminist, uh, it's only girls, what is this? Why didn't you do like a tournament for everyone? But I, I wish to, to have something for us because girl boy players are like professionals and cool but i actually want to have fun and seeing other girls play style and maybe compare yeah. to some we have some similarities as girls which is which is weird like uh also from north america or southeast asia <laughs> similarities like most of us like 90 percent of us are maining support heroes and okay. main <laughs> as scary jungle which is which is really cool and it's fun. This is that, the strengthen community and have fun with the girls. Right. Yeah. The argument of like, oh, uh, why is this just for girls? It's, I don't think there's any thought like, oh, there shouldn't be a girl on professional teams. Like you don't want to, it doesn't want to be like uh, American sports or anything like that, where it's like, oh, there's the girls league and the guys league. Like, I think the teams could easily be boys and girls together. We see the hunters have queen on there and she's, a fantastic player so you're not you're not promoting that idea right like we should we should still be able to be on the same teams together and tournaments together but this is just like your it's just a girl tournament it's not meant to be yeah. like yeah it's it's i i didn't mean it like something big like, i i actually okay. thought about the idea of strengthen the girls and the community between us to had no more girls from other regions to know people, not yeah. necessarily girls, but to, to get to know people and stuff. It's, it's, this is the point of Fame Glory, having fun, to, in my opinion, besides the competitional part, of course. <laughs> but some girls, like 50% of them, never ever participated in a, in a competition because they were, they're like in guilds in which the boys are playing in the competition and they are like too low skilled for competition. Okay. Which is which is sad though because some of them like really really wanted to, but didn't ever got the opportunity. So through this, it's it's opportunity for them to shine and show their skills. Which is right. Yeah. Yeah. I understand that. Yeah. There's a lot of there's a lot of guilds where lower skill people, even if they're they're girls or boys, people the higher skill people don't want to play with them and help them learn because they're focused on like we got to be the best and. I can't help you because I'm focused on my game. Yeah, exactly, exactly. This is this is something that like, we don't really want. We we have teams that are with uh -huh. even four or five skill tier differences, but they're still having a lot of fun playing and they're teaching each other. This is amazing. Like, hey, you look what you did wrong there, but in a nice way, and which is which is really cool. Nice so, and. Uh, and so this is all taking place on November seventh, right? Exactly. We are. And it's all okay. like all one day. Like there's not like one it, day because it's. Firstly, yeah. we thought to do it like on a in a month, but we decided to shorten it up for a day so we can stream it. Okay. Uh, we we are going to uh, have uh, a streaming uh, in New York City in a studio. Oh, cool. uh, where Lady Wabish and Brizzle McFizzle will meet and stream uh, for all three regions. And after that, there is going to be a party there. Nice, okay. People are invited who wants to come. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome there. Nice. So are they, is Brizzle and uh, Lady Wabish, are they playing in it or are they just streaming and shoutcasting? We are yeah, trying to only stream them. Okay. Uh, it's going to be quite exhausting for them because it's a whole day stream yeah it's going to be really really long like 10 hours stream and okay. uh, yeah we hope that they'll enjoy it though it's it's going to be uh quite tiring okay are the so there's going to be like a, is there a winner in each region or the winners from each region going to play each other then or is it just because of lag and issues like that it's just going to uh, yeah. be an sea an eu and an na winner well, firstly, uh, when I when I thought about this, I th I saw it like 
Okay, we have eight teams from each region and the, the finalists, like the first place is going to uh, to, met, to be matched against the winner from the other two regions. Yeah. Like we'll have a global winner, <laughs> only one winner for all. But um, after that, uh, we discussed this uh, and we, we ended with the conclusion that it's best to only organize them for a first phase, for a first tournament, for a first edition locally. Okay. And uh, because of, as you said, the legs and being not able to um, to have certain heroes, like do you only uh, have the, the casual heroes, the free rotation? Oh, okay. Yeah, so we said, okay, let's try this as first. And if the tournament works perfectly and it's going to be okay, maybe in the further in the future, we will try something more. But it's okay like this, to be honest. It's not so stressful. And uh, this means <laughs> for us, uh, also, we will have winners. So Plus, okay. we don't really want to promote uh, at the moment the competition between regions because our goal is mostly for, to, for girls to play together, not like who's yeah. the best in, okay. you know, in VG. Probably. Do you... But... Do you have a? Do you have faith in your team? Like, are you guys gonna oh, win? I, I really yeah. do. Yeah. <laughs> you don't want to show who's the best, but you're gonna win, right? You're. <laughs> I know. I I don't know. We actually have quite good players in okay. Europe, so uh, I hope uh, firstly to have fun, and secondly right. to win first place, of course. Okay. <laughs> but we'll uh, see. We'll see exactly. Uh, that's awesome. Um, so if this goes well, do you hope to do your? do it like annually or like every few months or kind of just see what happens with this one? Uh, I don't really know. I thought we should actually do it like uh, half a year. Like, okay. But uh, it depends. Like uh, we wanted to see firstly how many participants we had. And we have like, we had more than uh, 24 who registered. But a few uh, took the registration back, so uh, they didn't want it to play anymore. Uh, they couldn't. They weren't able to. Or, I don't know. Sure. Yeah. Stuff comes up. So. Yeah. Exactly. But we have the almost the maximum, like twenty three out of twenty four for a first edition, which is really cool. So I think uh, in the next edition we will have the full teams for sure. Nice. So, and, but I really would like to continue with this. It's, it's a great idea. And although maybe some people don't see it as good, I, I really see a future in this. And uh, definitely mm -hmm. it's, it's a plus for all of us. And yeah. Very cool. Well, everyone should be checking this out on November 7th. You know, it's like you said, 10 hours. So you should be able to stop in and see a game or two. Like everyone should go in there and support this and, just let everyone know how much they like it and uh, see these girls battle it out on the fold. I think it would be great. Yeah, uh, <laughs> and I'm sure, I'm sure there'll be something in the in-game news. So everyone will be able to quickly and easily find this stream. And then if you're in the New York region, go to this after party. Like I'm sure it's going to be the, a great time. Probably lots of swag too that super evil maybe sent out and lots of people will be there. I know. I've heard from a few people that they're heading out there, especially people that live in the area. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, continuing in the, like, uh, I guess, tournament uh, news, the VIPL was announced. Uh, this is the Vanglory International Premier League. Um, it's going to return December as part of the autumn season. And so we saw some of the VGL teams. We saw the winners, like... Uh, Ardent win uh, here a few months ago, so they're going to be headed out there. Uh, we'll also have Gangstar Sirius returning. Uh, we'll have G2 from Europe, uh, Hunters, Invincible Armada, Infamous, and as well as the winners from the upcoming Vanglory China International League and the winners of a Gamers League Masters from Japan. So 
I feel like this uh, VIP pillow is going to be even bigger than the last one. And I think more exciting now that we know some of the players, especially the Hunters and more of the Invincible Armadas. And uh, it's going to be pretty great. So it'll be 12 teams that will be split into three separate groups with four teams in each group. And these matches will be played from December 3rd to the 20th. And they'll take like a little holiday break. And they'll come back for the semifinals in that first week of January. Mm -hmm. uh, did you happen to watch any of these VIPL games from before? Oh, definitely. I've watched them. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> They're really cool. And you can actually learn a lot and cheer there. Oh, my God. Yeah. Go Hunters. Go Queen. But um, I find it's really cool for, uh, for us that, um, I know, we... We have the opportunity to see the best of all the regions, and yeah. it's it's cool, and that we reached like with the game reached this competition level, which is yeah. So are you usually rooting for the home EU teams like G two and I believe Red were Red playing last year or last time? Are you rooting for them or do you have another favorite that um, you're going for? I I don't actually have a favor. I, okay. I, I do, of course, like G2, and of course, I like the players from it. But um, I like all the players, and sometimes I do cheer from for a certain one, or like more the playstyle of another. Uh, I do really like how Gangstars, for example, plays. They do have a, a great composition, and Ardent were amazing. Like, yeah. wow. And that was, the, I, I had to watch the game twice. <laughs> Wow, really cool. But G2 as well. I, I was like, I, I was watching the matches and I was like, oh my God, oh my God, they're winning. I was, <laughs> and I was really happy for them. They, they really deserve that win. Yeah, and the, the VIPL is like a fantastic, like just showing, like it looks great. Like the package they put together, um, it's fantastic. I kind of hope that it's a little more live this time. Because we had details of things being leaked and like winners and things like that. So I hope we get like the stuff quicker. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's that's true. For example, I already knew that uh, Unknown was out of, yeah. of the, the teams before even watching it. Which kind of ruined the surprise. But uh, that's true. I don't know. They, they should do something. But... Uh, about it but i don't know exactly what's going to happen this time and i'm sure they're trying the best to do it and every time will there will be somebody who will spoil out everything. yeah <laughs> so, so i i try just to cover my ears and not listen to anyone right so. and then watch it watch it when you can so <laughs> exactly uh but yeah this will be fine i think it's it'd be great like gangsters they're returning and that's got to be really exciting for them to, as players new to the game like this, like to go out there again to Korea and hang out there and train and play. Uh, it's just going to be so exciting. <laughs> that, that would be cool. They're doing their vacations there, so it's cool. Yeah, basically. <laughs> That's kind of what it is. Um, I'm not sure who the exact lineup for Ardent is. I know Flash is going. I don't know if Shin is going yet. Uh as well as who else on their team. So I'm sure we'll get some more details on actual players being there very soon. Uh, but yeah, get ready for this. And yeah, December, was it? No, oh, no, <laughs> December 3rd, it kicks off. Yeah, what was the date? Yeah, so it's still like a month away. So we have, they'll even have another patch by then. So get ready for that. Um, the last bit of news before we wrap up the news segment here is the free hero rotation like to mention this, not everyone uh, plays as much as some of us do who have all the heroes and have everything in the game. Uh, but yeah, so this week, uh, a kind of fun lineup. It may work out well if the patch drops beforehand because Petal's in here. So you build a tryout Petal. Uh, mm -hmm. Also Catherine, Cruel, Adagio, Kashka, and Ringo. Um, so not a bad lineup, but uh, definitely some of the cheaper heroes like Catherine and Kashka and Ringo, who many of us probably have, uh, just cause they are easy to get. But I say 
everyone should start practicing cruel because I think he's going to be a beast in 1.10. <laughs> Definitely, I'm sure. I started actually to play today cruel. Okay. And uh, I still don't even forgot him. I was playing him back in the days when I started Vainglory and now uh, CP, of course. And now I was like, what should I do? How should I play him? But I still scored really nicely. And oh, it. nice. He uh, is probably so my worst hero. I do not. I am so <laughs> bad with him. I don't know. <laughs> it's hard to play and you have to time your abilities perfectly to win, in my opinion. But with a lot of practice and actually you should have fun playing him yeah i'm sure you're, you can reach a high level and yeah perfect your play style yeah I, and i also hate playing against cruels like i always feel like i could never kill them i, I hate cruels even more than i hate takas <laughs> so <laughs> too same i have same problem as support at least and i'm like stop killing my friends yes yeah. <laughs> for you <laughs> yeah no it, it's okay it's okay no cruel can be easy to counter if you have ring or vox can yeah. eat kite but yeah and you, you just shut them down early go in there and vein them you know don't let them don't let them get ahead true true so that that's a good point so if if you build breaking point then <laughs> yeah <laughs> if it's after <laughs> 15 20 minutes yeah 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 exactly. you, you're in trouble <laughs> exactly. uh, so check out that free hero rotation uh so that does it for the news but let's jump into a random item random item so every now and then i like to quickly chat about one of the items in van glory uh there are quite a few and as new players when you jump in you're like Wow, what do I buy? What do I build? And mm -hmm. I know I've been seeing a lot of new players coming into the game, especially on Twitter and in Twitch chats. People are always asking questions like, what do I go? What's this item for? What's this one for? Um, and I'm, you, I sometimes talk about like tier three items and these random items, but I want to talk about a tier one item that I think is uh, very good to build. Uh, this is the light armor. Uh, this is a fantastic item, and it's very efficient in the early game, uh, especially if you're in the jungle and you run into like a jewel or uh, a Ringo in there or even a Cruel. Like, just pick up this armor as maybe like your second or third buy, and you'll just be able to survive those fights a little bit because uh, the stats on it are pretty nice, and you know you're just not gonna die so easy. You get that plus 40 armor you get plus 40 shield and you'll be surprised at what it does in those like level two level three fights yeah it's, it's a good item that's true i mean all all defensive items are recommended yeah. but against weapon power carry and if you have a strong weapon power carry in the enemy team uh you should definitely at least buy tier one or tier two right yeah uh, I'll sit on I'll sit on this tier one armor uh, if I'm playing support for a little while and get like the fountain or maybe the crucible first. This is just kind of like, hey, I got a little bit of armor. It's also to remind me like, make sure you upgrade this, but to survive too as well. Uh, mm -hmm. So don't because rushing maybe like rushing the Atlas Pauldron or something like that isn't always necessary. Uh, depends, depends. If you have, yeah. uh, you play, for example, against a cruel, I usually go fountain as first item because in lane there's most of the times 19% a CP and I yeah. feel counter build against him. And then I rush directly Atlas. If yeah. this, sometimes I go, I, I stop building the fountain and go for Atlas first if I see that he already finished his breaking point because it's mm -hmm. criminal. I, I <laughs> that cruel. And yeah, I had a discussion with a friend uh, quite recently about what should I build first? Should I build first Fountain or Crucible? Because we got smashed by a crew. And he told me, uh, yeah, go for, go for Atlas first if you see that the crew has a breaking point already. If okay. not, then finish Fountain and then you go for the Atlas. And we try to kill the, the laner alone when he, to gank him. And then to try yeah. to invade two versus three. 
Okay. So, yeah. yeah. Good, good I don't. Point. I still don't really know exactly, and also depends a lot on the hero composition from the enemy team. Right. Yeah. So yeah, pay attention to that, but don't underestimate some of the tier one items, especially a light armor. I think it's just a all around <laughs> solid add there, especially if you're in a laner too. If you're going against a weapon laner. Like just to survive that little bit too sometimes helps. Uh, well, let, let's do some form static. Forum static. So this topic is perfect because you said you play a lot of support. I I often play support because nobody else wants to play it. So <laughs> I will just I will pick it. I'll be like fine. I'll play Catherine. Probably like ninety percent of my games are Catherine, but if I don't want to play support, I'll be, I'll like soft lock a laner and be like I'm sick of I'm sick of losing here or I, I can't do anything. But mm -hmm. this form topic was why don't people play support? <laughs> yeah, and, I like to play support. Yes. Sir. Yeah, people. There's something about like just not wanting to play it. Like if you get into a game and someone like insta locks a Catherine or a Rome Arden, you're like, what? You're like yeah. shocked at what world you're living in. <laughs> it's, it's really sad because uh, on a high skill tier level, uh, when I go and like to go solo cure or something and I see that they are like uh, locking a support, I'm, I'm like, okay, then you go support. But then they start to build things that are like totally useless for <laughs> You should first go as a support, buy defensive items, and then you go maybe carry items if you feel like you need to and you feel like to carry. But uh, yeah, this is quite annoying that some people don't actually know until now on a high uh, skill tier level how to uh, play support, okay, which is yeah. really, really important in a team and can change a lot. Yeah. I think some people don't like to play support because they like to get the kills. Like it is fun to kill oh, yeah. people, and as a support, like you know, sometimes maybe as if you're playing Catherine, your bubble will steal a kill or Arden. Like Arden, if I play an Arden, I steal kills all the time. It's just like on accident. It's like oh, I didn't realize how much damage I was gonna do. <laughs> yeah, I know the thing. Uh, well. Um... I could tell you because uh, I kind of changed now my maining from support to carry lane. Yeah. Uh, it is a huge, huge difference of play style. Like when I started to play uh, carry, I was way too uh, aggressive because okay. I was used to how tanky the supports are. And I was like going in and dying first. I was like, <laughs> Why? Why did I die? And then I started to actually play safe, and playing safe actually wins you the game slowly. Yeah, as the as, as the as the carry, but sometimes as the aggressive uh, roll on the the support, it's like sometimes you just gotta go in there and like don't don't give a fuck. It's just like you gotta be like oh, I'm I'm tanky. I'm just gonna check this bush. <laughs> It's hard to play carry, especially when you go from support player to carry player. Uh huh. Uh, I don't. I don't know. Um, it took me a while to adapt to the to this new play style, because uh, it's it, you always have to be really really focused and to focus the right one and kite kite kite, especially weapon power. You have to kite a lot. Yeah. And I'm like, oh god damn it! <laughs> but I had a few incredible matches in which I actually succeeded playing quite well. And nice. uh, I think in time, time you need time to adapt to it. It's not easy, but it's worth trying. And playing it, uh, it kind of changes you from support Two, mechanic okay. somehow. Now, when I go back, so I, I was playing like in the past few weeks, I played only uh, carry. And now yeah. I, I've tried a few rent with my friends and I, I went Arden as usual and I was so not used to it. I wasn't checking bushes and after mines anymore. I was like, oh, wait, wait, what I'm doing? I should, uh, should be okay. Okay. And, um, yeah, it's, it's changes. It's like, um, uh, like in theater, you know, with mm -hmm. actors and masks, 
like they have to put a new mask and such <laughs> different. It's it's like this at least. I feel like this when I change them from one to another. Yeah. So do you like uh do you like to see people play lots of different roles? I know it's more fun to be able to play everybody in the game, but do you feel like if you're someone who's playing this game like main support or main carry in lane or do you feel like it's better to bounce around? Um, like, I mean, of course, if they main this, it's definitely, oh, they're professionals. I'm, I'm going to let them, but uh, trying new heroes and new things makes you, makes you actually better and okay. improves your, your play style. And you understand the heroes, like, for example, Sky. If, if I wasn't playing Sky, I couldn't know how to counter, his, counter her as an enemy. Like right. to, to understand her abilities and stuff. But uh, yeah, this is something I, I really like, that you have this opportunity to change heroes and stuff, and you learn about each one in okay. time, of course, with yeah, a lot so, of exercise. So don't <laughs> underestimate the support role. Uh, give it a try. Uh, and if you're playing support, build support items like just Please. don't don't get mad because you didn't get to play the carry help your team win play the support <laughs> yeah definitely the support is strong although you don't get the kills that doesn't mean you didn't want the match because a support is really really important it's like a doctor like the patient yeah. couldn't do anything even if he had like 100 million euros if he wouldn't have somebody to care about him right very true yeah you gotta look at your like kill rate like uh involvement like i always look at like oh if there's 20 kills and i had 17 assists and maybe one kill like i was involved in you know almost 90 percent of those kills like that's that's fantastic like look at your assists like that's just as good as the kill really yeah. <laughs> uh, and the the last i guess tying in with like why don't people play supports but I came across this other topic called it's uh, how to teach a new player. And I know you mentioned you see a lot of uh, these girls in the Femme Paintel and all this stuff. They're like different skill tiers and, you know, and you were learning from uh, uh, some people from Gangstars. Uh, like, how do you feel like the best way to teach someone who's getting into this game once they're done with like playing bots, once you understand the general like don't dive a turret. Like, how yeah. do you start to tell people like, okay, we're going to rotate over here and we're going to do this. Like, uh, is it just playing with them on like discord and just like helping them out? Uh, it's hard, at least for me, because <laughs> I'm used to play in a different way. And then I see this and I'm like, no, don't do this. Don't, don't, oh God, you died. I told you not to go there. Yeah. Uh, that's true. But, um, for example, yeah, watching streams and okay. watching people play, like Shinkaigan, for example, how he explains the things, it's amazing and it's a great way to learn. <clears throat> also watching different movies, strategy, uh, movies, streams, strategies, uh, championships, tournaments, everything can help you. And also friends, that's true. We have, uh, I had uh, a lot of friends and I still have, friends who I'm helping and I'm like okay look but I'm, I'm a calm and telling them as a support you have to buy this this is and mm -hmm. if uh, if for example if he makes a mistake I'm, I'm not I'm like okay it's okay if I'm not on discord if I'm on discord I'm really mad I'm getting mad. <laughs> yeah, like... god damn it I told you now not to go. <laughs> pinging is different when I ping it's okay maybe he didn't understand the ping but when I tell him he I'm telling him exactly not to go there, and he still goes there and yeah. dies. I'll just, don't go in that bush, you know, but I'm just going to check it just to make sure you're right. <laughs> I was right. What are you doing? Yeah, exactly. Well, yeah, it's, it's still fun, actually, to, to help people out. Uh, and I have been teached to play as well. I mean, I was a shitty carry like really <laughs> when i was carrying people were like what and now uh i had i have a few friends who helped me out with this and for example with my weapon power box uh 
Iki, a friend, helped me a lot with it. He teach me exactly the builds and stuff, and it was amazing. Now I'm wrecking the fold. With okay. <laughs> like, oh my God, Sauce is caring, and I'm like, oh my God, I'm caring. How? This is incredible, and it, it's a good sensation of feeling that support can give you as well. Yeah. But it's you can't compare it. It's like when you're yeah, in. Yeah, I know. Sport. I've tried that. I've sometimes play with friends who you don't play very often and like I mm -hmm. do my best to help them tell them what to do but sometimes you also get so focused on your game and it's like oh, I was I was busy killing them what did what <laughs> happened in the jungle like I yeah I couldn't that. be there to help you guys uh, <laughs> sure, uh sure. but I also recommend like in, if you're in a guild like doing like private matches and just spectate like watch yeah. your other players and listen to them like Oh, let me get on Discord with you. I'm gonna watch and hear how you guys communicate. And oh, you're putting scout traps here, and you're going, you're skipping this minion to make sure you make it here faster, and things like that that you just realize by watching and hearing other people play is really nice. Yeah, that's that's also too. It's a good way to to learn. But of course, the most important thing is to play a lot. And, <laughs> yeah, I mean. As a one-year Vainglory player, I must say I spent hours on this game. And, yeah. Uh, I learned a lot since then. And I think time plays a really important issue. Because if you train and train and train and play and play and play, you actually start to understand how you, for example, kite or build or not only like the... The build itself like you have to buy these and those items like really understand how the hero works and to be like one with the hero okay yeah so yeah <laughs> and try people in this free rotation now that i mentioned like yeah. you know give everyone a try like you can't you're just getting started you can't own everybody don't don't drop like hundreds of dollars buying everyone although super evil may love that you know find out who you like and start playing them <laughs> exactly that's true and when you find something that, for example, you like, you buy it and then you just play him and main him. And then yeah. you probably get bored at some point and try another one. Try and someone else, yeah. Or they fall out of favor and they're terrible because of the patch and you gotta, yeah. you gotta move on. <laughs> at least sometimes. I, I loved Koshka, for example, but I yeah. don't really know how to build her anymore and I stopped playing her. But... For example, Arden, though he was quite weak a few patches ago, like he was one of the worst supports ever, I still played him because I loved his playstyle. Yeah, he's and fun now, to play. And now, thank God, they made him viable again, and I'm, <laughs> I'm only playing him when I go ranked. Yeah, I like playing him a lot too, yeah. Cool. Uh, so yeah, play with, I guess, play with some of your friends, watch streamers, watch YouTubers, mm -hmm. like, uh, just try different stuff. Uh, definitely stick to the casuals especially if you're new if you're not level 10 you can't play ranked anyway but stick to casuals and just try stuff people are less likely to get mad at you in casuals than ranked so <laughs> sadly even in casuals people are getting salty it's even sure it happens yeah <laughs> you know like when i bought ron and started to play her i was i was i got so many pings and everyone was like oh my god why are you dying so quick? And I was like, I don't know how to play her. Right, yeah, I don't know what I'm doing. Uh. <laughs> That's why when I had like buy a new hero, I started to go and play it first, uh, even like uh, in casual with my friends, like when we go full, uh, full group or in yeah. private. It's okay. the best way to, to practice and not annoy anyone. Yeah, that's good. Because you can ask them questions too, like, oh, should I try this? Or what's the Yeah, and what's it's the okay. Combo? Guys, I'm, I'm not a Sky player. Please don't get pissed. We're going to probably lose this match and lose like 10 minutes of your life, but please. Yeah. <laughs> and they're like, okay, well, I'll play support pedal and we'll do all this weird stuff. And like, all right, that's fine. <laughs> yeah, I'm always, I'm always locking pedal support if <laughs> I get insta lockers. I'm like, okay, you want to insta lock? I insta lock too. <laughs> and I started to main petal support now. Oh man. <laughs> too many insta lockers. Oh funny. It's fun, it's fun. Well, this has been a fantastic episode. Mademoiselle, thank you for joining me for episode fifty seven. Uh 
Again, let's mention the tournament, the Femme Fatale tournament happening on November 7th. Everyone should be checking this out. Go watch some of these great games that are going to go down. Um, and then how can people get in touch with you or find you on Twitter, in-game? Like, what, it, what are... a lot of uh, um, ways to be reached. Like, I do have Twitter. Uh, it's at Sosulet. I think it's pronounced. Okay. Uh, then I have uh, my line, which is uh, Sorana e uh, geni- Geniala. <laughs> <laughs> it's Romanian. I, I don't really know how to translate it. I do have Facebook too, but I won't give it here. Okay, that's fine. <laughs> you don't need people uh, stopping yeah, I, you on there. I know. I don't want people to stop my real life now. <laughs> and in game, I'm uh, Mademoiselle. It's not called Madame Moiselle, it's Mademoiselle. Because I, I met so many people pronouncing my in-game name wrong and I was like, oh my God, don't you know French? Come on. Oh no, yeah. <laughs> no, and, we're from America. <laughs> no, no, but it, it, like even in competition, people were pronouncing my in-game name wrong and I was like, no, come on. It's okay. okay. Well, definitely uh, be rooting for you in the tournament here. Everyone should go follow and, you know, friend you up in game. I'm sure it sounds like you're more than willing to play with people and, you know, yeah. have some fun. Definitely. Uh, and if you want to follow Shadow the Vein, Twitter at Shadow the Vein, website shadowthevein.com. All the episodes get posted there. Links to iTunes, Stitcher, YouTube, SoundCloud, however you want to watch, consume these. It's there for you. Uh, and Facebook page, facebook.com slash share the vein. Episodes get posted there. Other news, fun things I find about esports and Vanglory are shared over there. And that'll do it for this week's episode. Everyone, thanks for listening. Take care. Shatter the Vein.